Hi there. Can you make the tree on the left, but you want to make the tree on the right? If so, this is a video for you. My name is Ed Cavett, and in this tutorial, we're going to learn the tips and tricks for making really advanced recursive trees. To begin, we're going to use a basic recursion that makes a tree, except for we're just going to make a stick. We're not going to put multiple branching procedures in the recursion for now. We're just going to put one set of procedures for one branch or a stick and we're going to make it the best we possibly can make it and then once we have that perfected then we can start copying those procedures to make more branching. So you'll notice here that whenever we make a basic recursion using lines the segments don't match up nicely. So what we want to do is take each segment and build that. So we're going to draw that segment using smaller lines and then adjust the width of those lines as it goes up the segment until it gets down to the size it needs to be so that it fits nicely with the next segment. And since we're making lines to create our segment, we can split that line, those little lines, into separate lines and then color them differently. And then when it's drawn up the segment, it's gonna have some highlight, some middle tone, and some shade. With that out of the way, we can move on to the gradient color. So I want there to be a brighter color at the bottom and then a shadow at the top of the tree for the foliage. And I also want the texture of the branches to be rough. So I'm going to do that here. Then once our branch looks as beautiful as it can be, we can copy those set of procedures and make another branch inside of our recursion. So right now we're just making one stick. We're going to copy that stick. And then after those set of procedures, we're going to make another set of procedures, basically just copy it down there. But we don't want there to be a 100% chance that a branch is going to pop out of each joint of our main branch. So we have to set that inside of a condition with a pretty low percentage chance. And you can adjust this number depending on how much branching you want, but keep in mind that a higher percentage chance means you're going to have a branch at every joint and each branch carries chances for more branching and as a recursion it can get pretty hefty pretty quickly so you want to keep your values low. One thing that you may have noticed if you have uh, one set of branching procedures following another is that when the branching occurs it always happens at the joint of two segments but what if you want a branch to happen anywhere along the tree so along anywhere in a segment a branching can occur. Well, to do that, you take the second set of branching procedures that we copied after the first, just take that condition, find the loop inside the first branch. So you find the loop that's making the segment and you just drop that condition in right after it makes a line. So it's building the segment, it makes a line, and before it moves up to the next line, it's gonna ask, can I make a branch here? So if we look at the output, we can see that there's branching all along a segment instead of just at the joints when you do this. Now, because there are many more lines making a segment than there are joints making a tree, we want the percentage chance of making a branch when we're making it along a segment to be really low. So we're going to change that to something like 0 0.005 so that there's a really small chance of branching. And you can see even with that small chance, we're going to get a lot of branches most of the time. On occasion, we'll get a, a kind of an anemic tree, but most of the time it's going to be full. The odds that two anemic trees are going to be produced one after the other is really low. So if we just make one tree and then make another tree and composite those two together, we have an almost guaranteed chance that we're going to have a tree that's full, that we're never going to end up with, like with a really anemic tree. And I say never, but there's still always that chance because we're dealing with probability. So there's a lot of non-zeros. Now that we have a really nice looking tree, we can move on to the foliage part of it. So at the end of each branch, 
I'm going to have a chance for there to be sticks made. And the sticks are going to be made from a recursion. Now I could have the end of my branch go down to a stick size. But it starts getting crowded and it doesn't really look right. It, it doesn't have the dimension. It looks kind of flat. So I found one way to do this is to uh, just shut off my recursion for my tree at a, a kind of a larger size and then at the ends make these sticks that can pop off in any direction. And they're recursive so they can be kind of zigzaggy and capricious. And then each way along making a segment I can decide to make some leaves and collectively it's going to make some really nice foliage that's going to have these sticks inside them which is a nice detail. Because my stick is so much smaller than my tree I need a separate set of constraints so I'm using smax and smin for it and I also want to draw some grass along the base of my tree so I'm going to use a recursion for grass that's going to use the same constraints that the sticks use. So in draw I'm going to keep track of the frame count and uh, I'm going to draw a tree and then I'm going to draw another tree on top of it and together they're going to make one tree. And then I'll clear the screen and do that again. And after I draw each tree I'm going to go through a set of procedures here, a loop that's going to make some grass along the base. So it's going to make a one tree and some grass. It's going to make another tree and some grass and then it's going to clear the screen and do that again and uh, I can set a condition that will test the frame count and after so many frames it will stop so uh, in this example here I draw 25 trees to make the grass maker recursion it's just a simple branch recursion except for it's going to carry two parameters it has one for the length just like a regular recursion and then we're going to pass into it an angle and that angle, when we pass it into the recursion again, we're going to multiply it times itself in a little number so that the angle is increasing each time a segment is made. And what's going to happen is it's going to nicely bend the grass. And depending on whether the value you've passed into it initially is positive or negative, it'll bend it to the left or right. So you get a nice range of left and right bending grass along the base. Now we're ready to put our sticks on the end of our branches. We also want to track the color of the gradient. So as we move up the tree, let's keep track of that change in gradient so that we can map that to our leaves and create a neat effect. So where are we going to put our call for our stick maker function? Well, we're going to go to the very end of a branch past the condition that asks whether we can make another segment. We're going to go past that. We're going to pop in a condition that asks are we at a certain size segment length and if we are then we can start making sticks. Once we've done that we can make our stick recursion and it's just a real simple one branch recursion like we made at the very beginning of this video except we're going to add a set of procedures at the very beginning that's going to call the leaf maker function. So every time a stick segment is created there's a chance in the joint that a group of leaves will be created. In the leaf maker function, I just pick a, a random density and then I have a loop that runs through those number of leaves and then inside that loop I have some procedures that creates a leaf shape using begin shape and end shape and bezier vertex. I just copy those procedures again and flip the anchor point and it will create a whole heart shaped leaf.
Next, we're going to work on texturing the bark a little bit better. So say you want orange bark or something that's more manzanita or madronish. Well, you just uh, add a random small amount to one of the color values. So here I'm using uh, red and a little bit of green. And you do that for each one of the strokes. And because everything is factored to a percentage of our color amount, even though you change the color, it's still going to carry the shading and highlight and the gradient up and down the tree. There's also uh, some texturing that you can add randomly to the branches as they're being made. For instance, on a cottonwood tree or a dogwood or a birch tree, the white texture is broken by black imperfections kind of regularly, like these little spots or cracks. So we can represent that by changing the default stroke randomly by a small percent. So wherever we have a a line being built to make a segment. We're just going to change the default color randomly for any one of those three uh, parts of that line. So we have a highlight line, a mid middle tone, and a shadow line. We just take a random percentage of each one of those, change it to a darker tone, and then when we build the tree, it's going to have the speckling along it. And you can adjust that more or less you could also add noise instead of just taking a random amount you could add noise and this will actually texture the bark really neatly so you might give that a try I didn't do that here but that's a suggestion for later on here's the output once we've added the leaves and added the color gradient and factored all that in and you can see every once in a while we get kind of a an anemic looking tree uh, but most of the time we get a really nice looking kind of like a shrub or a bush or an ornamental. One more thing before I go, you notice that the leaves are gradient colored as they go up the tree. And that's what you get when you map the gradient color value for the branches to the color of the leaves. So the leaves that are lower in the tree are a different color and it changes as it goes up. So that's just an added touch to add a little bit of variety. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and have learned something. If you have, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Uh, hit subscribe, hit the bell to be notified, and as always, until next time you guys, take care.